I chop you up in a meat grinder, and the only thing that comes out that's left of you is your eyeball, you're, you're probably dead. But what if you weren't? Looks like we're talking about the warp train today. And with that comes some pretty major content warnings. The Warp Train story, also known as Love Town, has gotta be one of my favorite pieces of lore from the Project Moon franchise. But it's also of the most gruesome, gory, and existentially terrifying stories they've ever told. If you're not on board for that, well, here's your stop. If you are, though, then I've just got one question for you. If I offered to take you anywhere you wanted in 10 seconds, and you knew for sure that it would work without issue, would you take my offer? Because if so, then you'd be like many customers of the Warp Train, a magnificent piece of technology made possible by W Corp Singularity, one of the 26 major inventions that keep the city running. And just as you'd expect, not only is this train useful for getting around the metropolis nearly as large as South Korea, but it's so popular that passes cost an arm and a leg. Hell, make it two if you ride first class. But what we're interested in is exactly how it works, and more importantly, what happens when it doesn't. And to do that, let's look into the events of one particular trip. Tommy and Mary are a young couple on their way to take a vacation and manage to save up just enough to afford their first warp train ride. Tommy, being the more cautious of the two, is nervous about the safety of the train. But Mary, knowing that people take it for work every day, comforts him, saying that everything's going to be alright. And without any trouble, they make it onto the train and buckle into one of the ten seats that are in their car. Soon after, the train starts, and a warning's given that the doors will be locked shut during the trip, preventing anyone from getting out. This is especially important because W Corp has access to tools that are capable of creating portals to separate dimensions. As such, opening the door on this train will cause disastrous effects to those inside, much like being on an airplane. And it's by sending all 30 cars of the train through that space that they're able to bypass any conventional traffic and reach the end destination in a matter of 10 seconds. But then 10 seconds pass and nothing changes. Okay, maybe it's not quite as fast as advertised. 10 seconds does make for a handy tagline, but you know, the burgers on TV never look as good as the ones you actually get, right? Let's just give it a little longer. And then an hour passes, no changes. Not even any announcement or sign of something being broken. Just complete silence minus the whirring of the train's engine. Something has to be wrong, but being unable to open the doors, nobody can do anything but wait. So the passengers keep waiting for six hours, 10 hours, and by 17 hours, nearly everyone has cut their seatbelts to start walking around, still getting no signs of what's going on. The only thing that's changed is that Tommy, Mary, and everyone around them are clearly scared and on edge as the idea of them being trapped on this train is starting to feel more like a reality. The only question on everyone's mind being, how much longer will this last? And eventually we reach the 31 hour mark, which feels absurd. If you were missing for that long, someone would start to wonder if you had been kidnapped. But despite that and everyone being scared, there's a new question that's come to the forefront. When is the last time that I ate? And more importantly, why don't I feel hungry? Because at this point, with not only how much time has passed, but how stressed everyone's been, the idea of starving should have crossed someone's mind. Yet, while all of the passengers are clearly trapped, nobody here is feeling the negative effects of either hunger or thirst. With so much to process and so little answers, this becomes too much for poor little Tommy to take, causing him to pass out for three entire days. And when he wakes up, he's greeted not only by Mary, but two other passengers, Elena and Jae Hyun, a nurse and doctor that both have taken the train before without issue and are trying to make sense of the situation. While everyone's in agreement that W Corp has some explaining to do, they all agree that the fact that nobody needs to eat or do anything that comes afterward means the best they can do is keep waiting for help. Doing so for another few days before one passenger makes a discovery that irreversibly shakes everyone aboard. In the next car over, a man, manic from being trapped in a train car for over two weeks, has decided to slit his neck for everyone to see. But instead of dying, his head still dangles from his torso, the neck barely holding on. More disturbing still, his blood never fully separated from his body, as if it insisted on staying as one 
full being. And to the horror of the onlookers, he's not just still alive, but he can still talk, despite feeling in as much pain as one normally would from these kinds of injuries. Oh, look at this. <laughs> My neck is barely dangling, and I'm still alive. <laughs> Distraught, the other passengers do the only thing they can and quarantine the man in one of the back carriages. And as the news spreads over the next day, a handful of others inflicted similar wounds on themselves. In a desperate attempt to cope with the uncertainty and suffocating passage of time by feeling anything, even if it's pain. This new development once again begging the question, how much longer will this last? By now, Car 7, the one containing Tommy, Mary, Elena, and Jae Hyun, has become the center of a support network actively working to keep all of the unharmed passengers safe and calm. Due to their bedside manner, everyone in Car 7 and many nearby cars have stayed strong despite the attempted unaliving population now filling the five cars in the back of the train. So, you know, at least there's a group keeping order on the train, right? Things have changed. While cars 5 through 15 are still banding together to keep everyone sane, the cars beyond 15 are now entirely composed of injured, massacred, and nearly unrecognizable bodies getting through every moment using pain. Only this time, it's not by choice. Over the past two months, the self-afflicting passengers have decided to not only revel in their own pain, but to attack and mutilate the unharmed passengers, tearing them apart and playing with them like toys causing 10 cars to have fallen during this time. As a result, this has caused a war to break out between the warped passengers and the ones clinging onto Hope, barricading the doors with luggage and using makeshift weapons to defend themselves. However, due to the way the train works, one side has a clear advantage. While there may technically be infinite time on the train, the amount of conflict, injury, and stress of being trapped has taken a mental toll on everyone. And as that time has gotten longer, that toll's only gotten greater. So while nobody is able to die, anybody that is injured, either by themselves or by someone else, is going to feel much more of that strain every moment until they too reach their breaking point, effectively joining the afflicted mob. And as a result, putting an even greater strain on the remaining passengers. And now three months in, every single person knows that on some level. And every single person now has to ask themselves, how much longer will I last? But there are two things the survivors have that the afflicted don't. The first is that while the afflicted are driven by the need to feel something, the survivors are motivated by the need to save their loved ones. And the second is that they have both the medical and surgical knowledge of Elena and Jae Hyun. The combination of these two resulting in many of the survivors going through a procedure to make them stronger, using that desire to save each other. And this is what leads Elena to ask Tommy and Mary if they want to go through the procedure in order to help turn the tide in the war. Mary is willing, but Tommy hesitates, until seeing the passengers in carriage 14 get raided, unable to even stay cognizant now. And 113 days into this ride, he agrees if only to make sure the same thing doesn't happen to Mary. Day 120 comes, and the procedure is complete. It's unclear what's become of them, but Tommy and Mary can now feel each other's heartbeats, suggesting that somehow their bodies have been merged. 30 days later, Tommy and Mary are called to fight to help keep Carriage 10 safe. Now merged to the point of speaking in unison, Jae Hyun tells them that their affection will give them the power they need to continue fighting for as long as necessary, and he promises that this will be enough to turn the tide of the war quickly.
By now, nearly 2,000 years have passed within the confines of the train. Any memories of the dozens of years of life before the train have long gone. And all that remains is a little place called Lovetown. There's no longer any war or even differences between the survivors and the afflicted. Long past are the times of the struggle. Now, only the love that keeps the masses together. But while their bodies still move, their minds are long gone, reverted to children unable to think of anything other than the love that binds them and the meat that molds them. And yet, in a grim kind of way, it's almost peaceful. There's no more stress, no more worrying about the outside, left in a happy little place simply called Love Town. And just like that, everyone's made it to their stop in only 10 seconds. Warp well. So, what exactly happened? In short, business as usual. In fact, nearly everything on the train that happened was by design. The doors locking, the ride stopping, the stasis the passengers were put in, and even the eventual destruction of their bodies were all a factor in how the train runs. Because while the train is able to transport people anywhere in 10 seconds, there's a bit more to it than that. The train does work by creating portals to a separate space and does get people to their destination 10 seconds after leaving through bypassing traffic. However, it doesn't do this through bypassing anything in space, but in time. See, once the train is in its new space, it uses an engine from T-Corp, another large company, to store time and compress it before returning to its destination 10 seconds later. And if that sounds confusing, uh, yeah, it is. But put simply, the portal's used to place passengers in a private location. And while the engine is able to compress time, it needs a large amount of time to pass here for it to save time in the original dimension. Just think of it like getting interest on a bank account or something. And so we know how it brings people into warp space, how it gets people to their destination in 10 seconds, but the passengers when they return are still, well, sentient chowder. And if you're a fan of Limbus Company, you likely know what happens next. W Corp agents primarily work by entering the trains in these states and placing the bodies back into their seats. And yes, they both have to defend themselves from anyone who can still move and make sure the chunks from each person go in the right seat, at which point W Corp uses their singularity, it's not the ability to create portals, don't ask, Control Z Jutsu to return all of their bodies to the states they were in when entering the train. So what can we take away from this? Well, I don't know about you, but I never got this moment out of my head. Hell, I nearly lost my lunch when first playing this on stream. And while some of that was due to the way Tomari... exists, what hit the hardest was the existential dread that this story induced. The instant they hit that 15 day mark, my stomach dropped, and I felt like I could see the impending downfall of everyone on board. And every event afterward felt like a punch to the gut. Seeing every bloody domino fall, wondering just how long everyone could last. And when the timestamps jump from 150 days in to over nearly 10 years, and then 2000? Felt like the story up until then was a knife that was sticking itself into me before rapidly twisting itself twice. But you know the worst part that stuck with me? Left me up at night? Made me want to make a video on this before anything else from Library of Ruina? There was just nothing anyone on the train could do. Nobody there was assaulting anyone to survive, but it was out of an insidious force that can and will still affect humanity even if world hunger, shelter, or nearly any other crisis are solved. Boredom. While I may be oversimplifying it a bit, the reason that people started getting hurt was due to wanting to feel something to pass the time. And I don't care who you are, if you're given 2,000 years, no, the prospect of eternity for all you know, and needing to pass the time with that tension, it only takes one out of 300 people to break, or even just injure themselves for everything to take a turn for the worst. It's stuck in my head as this unexpected, existential terror that could strike you at any time in an enclosed space. And it left me just constantly asking, what could I do in this situation to not become this? And every time I ran it through, I came to the same conclusion, that no matter what you do, it's entirely inevitable and part of human nature to succumb to the need for change. Every time, except one. There's a way you can survive the warp train without turning into Tomarinera sauce. And if you want to know how to beat it, well just let me know in the comments, babies!
because we have so many topics to cover here that I've got to make polls out of it to figure out what comes next. As always, thank you to everyone for watching, as well as my kind supporters on Patreon. I'm really glad y'all like this kind of content, since I feel like the PM community deserves to have some kind of high-quality content to enjoy. So, I don't know, take care, and hey, good job not distorting today. Oh, also, uh, first-class passengers can pay extra to be put in these stasis vats to not experience the eternity of time. Don't worry, I didn't forget that.